Hello everyone. I am Dr. Deepika Malik. Welcome to the next session of microscopy. In this session we'll discuss electron microscopy in detail. Electron microscopy is a powerful imaging technique that uses a beam of accelerated electrons as a source of illumination instead of visible light to achieve much higher resolution than optical microscopy. It is a special type of microscope having a high resolution of images able to magnify objects in nanometers which are formed by controlled use of electrons in vacuum captured on a phosphorescent screen. Ernest Ruska, a German engineer and academic professor, built the first electron microscope in 1931 and the same principles behind his prototype still govern modern electron microscopes. Electron microscope is used when the greatest resolution is required and when the living state can be ignored. The images produced in an electron microscope reveal the ultra structures of cells. Principle of electron microscopy. The principle of electron microscopy is based on the behavior of electrons when they interact with specimens. Electron source in electron microscopy a beam of electrons is used as the source of illumination this beam is generated by an electron gun typically using a heated tungsten filament acceleration to move electrons down the column an accelerating voltage mostly between 100 kV to 1000 kV is applied between the cathode and the anode resulting in emitting of electrons from the tungsten filament the voltage accelerates the emitted electrons to high energies depending on the type of electron microscope and the desired resolution electron lenses After acceleration the electron beam passes through a series of electromagnetic lenses and apertures within the electron optical column Electromagnetic lenses are made of magnetic materials specifically iron and other ferromagnetic alloys These materials exhibit strong magnetic properties allowing them to focus and control the path of electron beams through the application of magnetic fields These lenses include two sets of condenser lenses to focus a thin tight beam onto the specimen objective lenses to magnify the image formed by the transmitted electrons and projector or ocular lenses produces the final magnified image here you can see the real electromagnetic lens and the second image shows how it works to direct the electron beam specimen preparation the specimen to be examined is made extremely thin at least 200 times thinner than those used in the optical microscope ultra thin sections of 20 to 100 nanometers are cut which is placed on the specimen holder specimen interaction when the electron beam interacts with the specimen several important processes occur transmission in transmission electron microscopy electrons that pass through the specimen are transmitted to form an image the transmitted electrons are focused onto a fluorescent screen or detector to create the image secondary electron generation or back scattering in scanning electron microscopy back scattered electrons or secondary electrons are detected These electrons have low energy and are reflected back from the specimen's surface as you can see here in the diagram by measuring the intensity of back scattered electrons the topography and composition of specimen's surface can be analyzed electron detection detectors are used to capture the electrons that have interacted with the specimen the final image is projected on a fluorescent screen Below the fluorescent screen is a digital camera for recording the image. In transmission electron microscopy, it records the transmitted electrons to create an image. In scanning electron microscopy, back scattered or secondary electrons are detected to form the image. Resolution The key advantage of electron microscopy is its high resolution, which is determined by the wavelength of electrons. Because electrons have much shorter wavelengths than visible light, electron microscopes can resolve fine details in specimens including individual atoms in some cases. 
The next slide discusses what kind of samples can be analyzed using electron microscope. Electron microscopes are primarily used for the analysis of non-living samples. The high energy electron beams used in electron microscopes can be destructive to living organisms, causing damage to biological structures and leading to their demise. As a result, electron microscopy is not suitable for studying living cells or organisms in their natural state. The sample preparation methods like fixation, dehydration and staining processes preserve the structure of the cells or tissues at a specific point in time but do not allow for observation of dynamic biological processes or the study of living organisms. For real-time observations of living cells and dynamic biological processes, microscopy techniques such as light microscopy, and fluorescence microscopy is more suitable as they allow for non-destructive imaging of living samples. Types of electron microscope There are two major different types of electron microscope, transmission electron microscope or scanning electron microscope. Transmission electron microscope or TEM a TEM is a powerful microscopy technique that allows scientists and researchers to visualize the internal structure of specimen at an extremely high resolution down to the nanometer scale. TEM works on the principle of transmitting electrons through a thin specimen less than 100 nanometer thick to create detailed images. Electrons pass through the specimen without interacting significantly. These transmitted electrons contribute to the formation of the TEM image and are responsible for the contrast in the final image. TEM operates in a high vacuum to prevent electron scattering by air molecules which can degrade image quality. Additional electromagnetic lenses including intermediate and projector lenses as you can see here in the diagram may be present in the column to further magnify and project the electron image onto a viewing screen or camera. The resulting image is a projection of specimen structure in two dimensions. TEM is used among other things to image the interior of cells in thin sections, the structure of protein molecules contrasted by metal shadowing, the organization of molecules in viruses and cytoskeletal filaments prepared by the negative staining technique and the arrangement of protein molecules in cell membranes by freeze fracture. We will discuss all these methods in detail in further slides. Sample preparation for TEM. The TEM requires ultra-thin specimens that can transmit electrons effectively. Sample preparation for TEM can be a time-consuming and delicate process. Proper training and experience are essential for successful TEM sample preparation. Here are the general steps for sample preparation. Fixation. If your sample is biological, example cells or tissues, start by fixing it. Common fixatives includes glutaldehyde and osmium tetroxide. Glutaldehyde is used to crosslink proteins followed by osmium tetroxide to fix and stain lipid membranes. Fixation helps preserve the specimen structure and prevents degradation. Dehydration Samples must be dehydrated to remove water as water can scatter electrons and reduce image quality. Gradually, replace water with an organic solvent, example ethanol or acetone, through a series of increasing concentrations. Embedding Embed the dehydrated samples in a resin or plastic. Common embedding materials include epoxy resins or acrylic resins. Embedding provides support and stability to the specimen. Sectioning Use an ultra microtome to cut ultra thin sections less than 100 nanometers thick from the embedded block with a diamond knife. These sections should be transparent to electrons. Grid mounting Transfer the ultra thin sections onto copper grids using fine tipped forceps. Former polymer and carbon provides a stable and flat support structure for the specimen as you can see here in the diagram. Formware has adhesive properties allowing specimens to adhere to the film surface. This helps secure the specimen in place on the grid. The carbon film acts as a substrate for the metal layer. Carbon can also provide some contrast in TEM images. 
staining optional staining with heavy metals example urinal acetate lead citrate can enhance contrast in tem images it is especially useful for biological specimens staining is optional and depends on the type of sample and research goals common heavy metal stains include urinal acetate the stain is often used as a negative stain surrounding the specimen with a contrasting dark background it can highlight membranes and macromolecular structures lead citrate lead citrate is used as a positive stain and can increase contrast in areas with lower electron density such as cellular organelles osmium tetroxide it is a strong electron dense stain that is used to enhance contrast in lipid rich structures like cell membranes and myelin Ruthenium red the stain is used to highlight polysaccharides and extracellular matrix components in biological samples the next step is drying allow the grids to air dry but avoid excessive drying as it can cause artifacts artifacts are damage caused in specimen preparation and it sometimes is confused with specimen ultrastructure now the next slide discusses methods to enhance contrast in tem samples the first method is shadow casting second is negative staining and third is freeze fracture now we'll discuss all these three steps one by one in detail shadow casting shadow casting is a technique used to enhance the contrast and visualize fine structural details of a specimen It involves selectively depositing a heavy metal or other high atomic number material onto the surface of a specimen to create shadows or contrast differences as you can see here in the diagram shadow casting is typically applied to samples that are relatively thin and electron transparent a heavy metal such as platinum or tungsten is evaporated or sputter coated onto the specimen's surface The deposition is typically done at an angle rather than perpendicular to the specimen to create shadows. The angle at which the heavy metal is deposited is critical. Depositing the metal at a low angle, usually around 45 degrees, creates shadow on the specimen surface as it's very clear in this diagram. The shadowed specimen is then imaged using tem. The electrons passing through the specimen interact with the heavy metal coated surface, creating contrast variations in the images. Negative staining. Negative staining involves the deposition of heavy metal salts, example uranyl acetate or phosphotungstic acid, around the specimen. The heavy metal ions are negatively charged and are repelled by the negatively charged specimen, creating a high contrast background as you can see here. The specimen appears dark against a bright background in electron micrographs. Negative staining is commonly used to visualize fine structures such as viruses and macromolecular complexes and nanoparticles. It is particularly useful when a quick and high contrast image of the specimen is required. Freeze fracture. Freeze fracture is based on the concept of rapidly freezing a specimen to extremely low temperatures followed by fracturing the frozen sample to expose its internal structure as you can see here in the diagram. The frozen sample is typically fractured along natural planes of weakness such as within the lipid bilayer of cell membranes. After fracturing, the exposed surfaces are typically covered with a layer of platinum and carbon by vacuum deposition. This metal or carbon layer forms a replica of the fractured surface. The metal or carbon replica is gently lifted off the specimen, leaving behind a negative replica of the fractured surface. This negative replica can be further processed for electron microscopy. The diagram here shows step by step how the freeze fracture is being done. First, the sample is rapidly freezed using a liquid propane. Then the sample is fractured with a glass knife. Then there is a deposition of platinum at an angle of 45 degree. Then carbon is added usually at an angle of 90 degree. then the replica film is separated and then washing is done and finally it is placed on the grid so that it can be viewed under the microscope applications of tem structural biology tem is used to study the detailed structures of cells including organelles membranes and cytoskeletal components tem also helps to determine the 3d structures of biological macromolecules such as protein nucleic acids and viruses 
material science nano materials tem is crucial for characterizing nanoparticles nanowires and other nano materials providing insight into size shape and crystal structure tem is used to determine the atomic structure of materials including metals semiconductors and ceramics tem investigates defects dislocations and green boundaries in materials to understand their properties Nanotechnology TEM is used for quality control and characterization of nanoscale devices, sensors and materials. TEM helps optimize nanoparticle synthesis processes by visualizing particle size and shape. Geology and Earth Sciences TEM aids in studying the crystal structures and composition of minerals contributing to geological research and mineral identification. TEM is applied to visualize microorganisms in geological and environmental samples. Semiconductor industry TEM is used to inspect semiconductor devices, analyze defects and verify the quality of semiconductor materials. Materials for energy applications TEM studies the microstructure of materials used in batteries and fuel cells to improve their efficiency and lifespan. TEM helps analyze the structure and composition of materials used in photovoltaics. Environmental science TEM is used to study microbial communities in various environments including soil, water and extreme habitats. Pollutant analysis TEM helps analyze particulate matter, aerosols and pollutants in environmental samples. Medicine and pathology TEM provides ultrastructural information in medical diagnostics and research, helping to identify cellular and tissue abnormalities. TEM is used to study synaptic conditions, neural circuits and the fine structure of neurons in neuroscience research. Forensic science TEM assists in analysis of trace evidence including fibers, hairs and biological materials in criminal investigations. Art and conservation TEM is employed to analyze pigments, coatings, and the microscopic structure of artworks, aiding in art restoration and preservation. Catalysis and Chemistry TEM helps understand the structure and composition of catalysts, improving their efficiency in chemical reactions. TEM is also used to study chemical reactions at the nanoscale. In the next session, we'll discuss in detail scanning electron microscope. Thank you for watching. For any queries, you can contact me through the given email ID.